Michael Betsy here. Today I will be doing a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to make paw pads. Uh, so you're going to need a few things. You're going to need uh, some parchment paper to work on, some cardboard. I just used a, a cake mix thing. Some modeling clay. It must be sulfur-free. If you're unsure, uh, I know that the modeling clay from the dollar store is sulfur-free. Uh, you're also going to need a marker, and you're probably going to need a knife. Um, you might not, but I think it's easier. Alright, so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your cardboard, lay it flat down, and trace your hand. Um, and this will give you a guideline about how large to make your paw pads. After you have your hands traced out onto your cardboard, uh, it is recommended that you basically draw over top of it with a pen or some other colored marker what your paw will look like. Because whenever you make your paw pattern, your paw is going to be larger than your actual hand, if that makes any sense. Uh, so I just drew, you know, a rough scale so I know how large I need to make my paw pads. Uh, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to start sculpting, so let's get into that. Alright, I've trimmed down the cardboard so it's a little bit easier to see, and I've also cut all of my clay into smaller squares, that way it's easier to work with. Uh, that said, the first thing you're going to do is essentially warm up the clay. Um, I really like this modeling clay from the bar store, um, because it's modeling clay and actually does not take forever to warm up. Uh, so now, essentially, I'm just going, I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, shaping the digits of my paw pad, which are for the fingers. So, uh, it's recommended that you have a reference of your paw pads on your phone. The problem that people have with the paw pads uh, when they're making them is that the paw digits themselves will be very fat. Uh, they'll be very thick. So, I'm going to start by making them very thick, uh, and then I'm actually going to cut them in half, uh, which is why the knife is useful. Um, otherwise, you'll have a problem with them being too thick and that will reduce your dexterity of your fingers. That said, once you are happy with your design, uh, if you feel the paw pads are too thick, you may thin them down by using a knife, which is what I'm probably going to do. Um, essentially, you're just going to take a large knife and thinly slice off, uh, you know, it until you've got the desired thickness. Uh, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to show you how to texturize. I figured I should uh, quickly show you how to do it. So essentially, what I'm doing is, I'm just taking my sponge, which is, this is a brand new sponge, and I'm just gently pushing into the surface of my clay uh, until I get these, essentially these light depressions on uh, my clay. Uh, this is something that may not be noticeable on the camera, but I definitely personally recommend doing it because even if it does not, even if the detail does not be, is not picked up in your mold and does not transfer over to your castings, uh, what will be picked up is a smooth texture because whenever you are sculpting uh, your clay, you're actually adding your fingerprints to it, uh, which will be noticeable, and so will get, you know, different layers of smoothness and so on and so forth. Like, this is definitely noticeable, uh, you know, as you're in right now, and that will transfer over to your mold, but depending on the kind of molding you use, this will not. But, if it does, then you've got a really cool texture to work with, but if it doesn't, then you essentially just you know, squashed out the imperfections a little bit. Uh, so, I'm just gonna do a little bit of a close-up so you can see, uh, hopefully, there you can see a little bit of it, that it does have, you know, a fuzzy look to it now, uh, although in, uh, up close in real life, it, it actually has a nice texture to it. Anyways, you are now ready to proceed to the next video where you, we will go with casting types. Uh, there are basically three different kinds of castings, and I will essentially show you which ones are going to be used for what kind of material, and so on and so forth. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.